Okay, this is November the 7th, 2024, and we're prepared to start a Shaker Commission meeting. And first, we'll start with the roll. Chairperson Colton is here. Uh, Member Gordon? He's here. He's here. He's here on. Uh, here, here, here. Member Gordet? Here. Member Kearns? Yeah. Hey, Jack? Said he might not be late. Right. Member Cronheim? Here. Colton at Lutz? Yes, I'm here. Colton at Armstrong is not here yet. Okay, so therefore we have a quorum, and I will say that this note, the notice requirements of the open public meeting will for this meeting have been satisfied. Copy of the annual notice was sent to the Asbury Park Press and the Coast, posted in the town hall and filed in the office of the township clerk on June 28, 2024. This meeting will be recorded and available on Ocean Township's YouTube channel. Okay, so we usually start with the minutes uh, from the previous meeting. Uh, has everyone had a chance to review the minutes? Yes. Are there any comments? No comments on it. Does anyone feel the move that we accept these minutes? Uh -oh. No. comments? I move. I move to accept. Member Gordet has seconded. No, Member Gordet has to abstain. For abstain. For abstain. Okay. Member what? Am I voting tonight? Yes, you are. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll second. And uh, so all in favor, raise your hand or some other thing. Aye. Motion, you this? Yes, aye. Okay, so we have approved the minutes. Is Mr. Brooks coming tonight? No. No, he's not coming. Uh, I'm not sure it's that he'll be coming that much more if things he's told me, but... Uh, if he had anything specific, I think he might have uh, called in or something like that. Okay? So right now, at least as far as the tree stuff in general, there's nothing new you know, that he's in front of me. That's uh, worth uh, addressing. So uh, that said, uh, the second item on the agenda is the Shaker Commission Planning Committee. But, so, if you would please tell us what your committee, have you been committeeing? We have been committeeing. Uh, we've met, as you all know, once a month since, since June. It's the first, uh, uh, first meeting. Uh, and uh, Ken and I are both on, on the committee, uh, as well as Julia Simante and uh, Angelique Baxi. So, we've got Planning Environmental Commission. And we also have Stephen Higgins from the Department of Public Works uh, on the committee as well, and Patrick Sullivan from the schools. So the goal of this meeting, just a quick recap, you all was to try to figure out a way to plan to create help create plan going forward for one year, five year, ten years, how to be proactive of how do we, you know, make Ocean Township greener and uh, have more trees and you know, do better uh, do a good job with trees in the township. So the things that we realized, you know, when we first started the committee was how much we didn't know that we needed tree canopy, we needed a new tree canopy, uh, that we needed to have better community engagement. Uh, and uh, to that, so the things that how that's developed, and we wanted to be coordinated with the schools. So how this has all been shaking out, uh, which is very exciting, is that we have been working with the schools. They first they okayed us to uh, do a create a survey. We created a, a draft of a survey. And uh, the, the superintendent of the school said that we could use their software services to get the survey out to all the residents. Uh, but then we met with the teachers as well, the two teachers, Diane uh, Brennan and um, Megan Edson in the middle school. And we have here tonight Megan, I'm sorry, we have here tonight Bella and Emma, who are in Ms. Edson's class. They're observing us tonight. Uh, and the teachers were very excited about how what we're doing could work in their classroom and how they could help. So the uh, Miss Edson's class is going to be helping uh, create and distribute and do PSAs for the survey. So they're working on that with the woman in our committee, Angelie Baxi, who's, who's been working on the survey. So they'll do all of that. When they're done, finished with that, bring it to Shade Tree Commission that's presented here. And they'll also uh, want to present a copy to the council at the workshop for the council to the student engagement. Mm -hmm. Is fantastic, and we want to show the work we're doing. So that's the survey piece, and that's going to be an opportunity to really get information 
from um, everyone in the township, including uh, the overburdened communities. And so this is the subjective information and engagement piece we want to start with. This is the, you know, do you do you have trees? Can you see trees outside your window? How many trees? You know, can you see three trees? What, you know, do you have flooding in your area? Um, you know, do you have trouble? Do your roads close? Do you have trouble? The school buses have trouble. Trying to get some of this information because trees and flooding are connected that impact people's lives. The other piece of this, we realize we want to. Sure. But I looked at the survey. Most of the addresses, uh, you know, traffic on the streets and so on and so forth, the trees were from flooding and so on and so forth. But we, I know for a fact that we did our own planting that has become a tree a hazard. So people should address problems that trees are actually causing on the streets. Okay, that's a that's a potential uh, question, and I'll bring that back to uh, Angela and Sid. Our problem. I think there's also a, a section, a question in right now in the survey that does say, if you know, do you know who to call if there's a problem with the tree in your community? You know, and and gives that information. As well, so there is that piece, but I'll make sure it's clear that we can get that information as well. Uh, the other piece, if I may add, we, even though the survey is anonymous, we try to associate it with different districts so that when it's returned, we at least know it's it, the vicinity. Or the or, yeah, or right. the apartments, <laughs> or yeah, exactly. It, it, so so that there are three three districts you created based on the map of the town that's. We're going to be using the voting. We're going to be using the voting districts because they're more specific than the garbage districts, and they're already mapped out. And they're pretty Some much. Some of those are kind of weird. But, but they align very well with the DEP's overburdened community maps. Okay. If you look at the maps and you overlay them, they align. So it's okay. We'll get. We'll be able to see. So people will just be able to pick a color, or pick a number, so we'll know what area they live in. So that right. was sort of where we were with that. So um, I will bring back to Ms. Edson. Uh, this or Mrs. Nice. Yes. All right, I'll bring back to Ms. Edson uh, and Angela and Patrice at um, uh, Make sure that that's clear. Um, the other piece is tree canopy. And uh, uh, Mrs. Brannon uh, has, there's, the schools all have access to GIS software. And she wants to work with that with her students. And so we're going to uh, try to do a student tree canopy, GIS, and also see if there's flooding in that software as well. So they're going to be exploring that with Julia Cermonte, who, you know, having the Cermonte involved in this is a good thing. She certainly knows her way around mapping and stuff. So um, so they're going to be looking at that. And the great thing, and so that's more of the objective data. The great thing about getting this initial information with the student <coughs> help, it, it, it builds community engagement. It helps everybody in the community know that we're doing this. It also gives the data we need to do grants. So we can get a grant maybe to do a professional you know, tree canopy survey. I mean, we could use shade, shade tree funds to do that if we wanted to, I suppose. But it's nice. Well, you don't have to use your own money. So grants, a lot of grants these days in our, in our, in this, in this, you know, um, these days are really, uh, grantee, grantors really prefer to give grants that uh, help overburden communities, especially. So having this information and data will help us secure grants in the future for all kinds of things, for tree canopy perhaps, for planting projects, for all kinds of stuff. So that's the stage that's involving the students right now. Um, and uh, I think it's very exciting. I think Patrick Sullivan, who's our liaison, he's head of science for all the schools in Ocean Township, uh, is also going to be talking to the high schoolers and uh, maybe in the statistics, maybe there's a mathematical possibility. Um, the math department will be looking at the data that comes in from the surveys. So this is just great to have a, a workforce that can do this and uh, you know um, and get us the results and visibility that this they need. So it's a it's a really I'm, I'm really pleased that, uh, with my committee they've been working really hard and that we've gotten this far with, uh, with this. So that's the outreach piece and track how to gather information. Killing two birds with one stone, gathering information and doing engagement at the same time. It's also a nice way for the students to get to learn more about the community. Right. Yeah, and you know, and the trees, and you know what we do, and in government, how to work in government. 
Uh, <laughs> um, the other piece of this, you know, working with uh, knowing things we don't know, is we do know a lot about the climate tree, about the shade tree farm. So I've got a list. Here's your copy. I have shade tree. This is spending, shade tree fund spending for the last three years. I have hard copies. I don't have a digital copy. But this is the last three years. Uh, and I'm going to. Uh, I'm go I've asked to have this also since they have this the official record, I guess. to have this uh, put together in a way that shows different columns of income, tree removal, tree maintenance, tree planting. I mean, there's just another way to parse out this information so it's easier to read and understand. Um, but finance can do it's that. useful that way too because the yeah. the community forestry report, you know. Put those separate numbers. Yeah. 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 So we're gonna. I'm gonna. Yeah. Of course, there's other costs that, that go into going to that. They don't strictly from the shade. This is on the shade tree. Yeah. And now you'll see there are things in here that were kind of surprising to me too. There's uh, capital expenditures, big capital expenditures for the equipment. Yeah. Well, well, they came in the shade tree fund. Oh no, that that was too. What? Well, that's what yeah, we get too, but it, why would that block that also? Well, it's, it's, and we paid for half of the task. Work task came out of this, it's all for free maintenance. But, um, so it was just, it's just good, I think it's important for us to have these numbers. Yeah, it's just part, part of our fact finding, <laughs> gathering information, <laughs> what we don't know. And I also want the uh, in new information to also show what the incomes were in the Shade Tree Fund what, and what the projected incomes are. Do we have any big developer? Uh, pieces that are coming still. So, you know, what kind of money are we still owed you know, to the Shade Tree Farm for the commercial development? Because I don't know what those contracts are. So, and there should continuing be a way of, to try to get this. There should be a way of connecting planning board decisions where they make those agreements about uh, right. about the monies for trees to find it to, to connect it. Well, this yeah, we should be able to follow up and make well, yeah, sure. We have a same deposits here. You're saying plus is coming in. No, but it, they may not be deposits yet, but they're commitments. Right. So, so we need to know that. Yeah, the whole thing needs to have uh, have it spelled out. I'm sure when you know when the finance guy looks at this, it's clear as crystal to him. But you know, for the rest of us, I have to you know really my eyes are looking for it. I think they're talking about increasing the fee from three fifty, which was the same, to seven fifty. If you make a difference, I mean, the difference. So that's there already is, in the ordinance. Not in the, in the community government. It's only in your ordinance. It was passed. Which? The the ordinance that sets fees. If no. they're still charging 350, it's wrong. No, no, no. I'm not talking about people's people, homeowner stuff. I'm talking about commercial. Ah, oh, okay. That's where thing, right. they take. That's where they take down a lot of trees, and they're hopefully getting that off because I tried. tried I'm trying, so we'll see how it works out. But I pointed out to Dave one day, I used the wrong number. I said for every thousand trees that we lose four hundred thousand dollars. I should have said for every twenty five hundred trees we lose a million dollars. The the other thing I just want you all to note in this is there's a there's a lot of, of talking with public works about this, um, a lot of this tree removal is emergency tree removal. These are things that had to come down because they were falling down. You know, and and most of this is that, and uh, and some ca and the capital expenses. There's very little actual planting no, in the years. There's the arborvitae over here. There's the stuff that went on behind. Yes, yeah, and arborvitae are, so are not arborvitae are not shade trees. Right. So I'm not sure that means it's it being a problem. What is this? A few things. Fifteen thousand dollars for arborvitae. They're actually too close to planting, of course, but that's a solution. Right. But, uh, but it does say the state commission is responsible for planting, as you know, trees and I, I do read shrubbery, um, shrubbery or bushes, but, you know, and maintenance thereof. So, I, I, but the, the point is, we haven't said, you know, we this is shows me the need to really have a plan that says we need to plant X. You know, X amount or X value of trees over this period of time, and to figure out where. My my future plan is to meet with um, 
the head of the new head of the sewage authority, the executive director of the sewage authority, who is very informed about flooding in mm -hmm. town. <laughs> <laughs> and and, uh, and storm water and flooding, so that's sort of just filling in for our own information uh, and kind of mapping ideas where where we have issues with flooding, and sort of getting more of an understanding of the engineering pieces because it's so related to trees. So that's a conversation that's coming up as well. So that's where we are, and I welcome any questions. I think that. Uh, what we're going to do for trees and not you know, plant them and everything else. We need, we need a plan. We need to figure out where and, and when and so on and so forth. And, uh, and we also have to have, and it's not clear where the budget is going to come from. I'm trying to talk about this also, but we, we learned, we did a plan on Alper and Perrine and a few of the other side streets. Right? So, okay, go. And that's what, right, that's the problem. They, they grew. And now they're well, they weren't maintained. Now they're a hazard. So what I'm saying is, so part of anything we do plant, mm -hmm. we need to make sure we've got funding. To, to, you know, the first few years they just sort of hanging out, but after that, we've got to start trimming them up and making sure that we keep the cost down for overall for maintenance and so on. So part of the other problem, of course, is that a lot of places we like to plant trees. You know, um, they. they the streets, the way they're designed now, can't support trees on town property. So we've got to come up with a plan for that. I do know for a fact that in Freehold Township, um, if you, you apply for a tree and they, they plant it on your property, and then they say, okay, you've got, you've got, you know, I don't know if you sign up or what, but then you take care of it. Type of thing. And uh, I tried, I asked the shade tree guy, and he, he didn't talk about whether they have easements or any of that sort of stuff either, so I'm not sure what that was. So what or should the attorney name? So step one, right, is to have a tree canopy done and have an idea of where we need trees, where there isn't thirty percent coverage, which we really know improves the you know, quality of life for everyone in the township. Um, and that's step one is to figure out where. And then when we see where we have a shortage of trees, then we can help develop strategies about the specifics of where and how and address questions such as does the township do we talk about does the township pay for trees on private land, or do we talk with landlords? Do we bring landlords of developments in and talk to them about the importance of this, and perhaps you know get them involved in a civic engagement project with us, where we say, okay, you put them, you put them in, we'll maintain them, or you know you pay for the trees, we'll put them in, or you know we'll do a ribbon cutting ceremony. There's all kinds of ways that that that, that you know. Landowner engagement is a different kind of outreach, but I think could be very valuable as well. And but you know, and that you know, I think that's a possibility as well. We don't. I, I love not having to take things out of the shade tree fund if we don't have to. So i um, and I and I do think there will be places where we'll see that there isn't perhaps public space physically to put a tree, but there are trees needed. So I think uh, that's when we bring people who do own that land to the table. And are you interested? We, we see this as a problem. You want to help out and uh, let them, you know, let them uh, get their picture, you know, uh, at, uh, you know, a good service recommendation and be good citizens and engage with them. So, and not everyone probably will want to, but there are probably those who would. So that's another possibility too. But step one, let's see where we need them. Let's get the truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's all I got. Anyone else has any thoughts? It's okay if you speak up. You know. Okay. Try not to slurp too loudly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's true. In a couple of places I see here, we're paying for trees to be taken off of uh, rent property. Public oh, property, parks, and recreation property. I would think the rec department would have. So you've got to have a maintenance budget. It's public land. The shade tree commission is okay. unless it's the schools. No, well, the schools are a different animal. No, right. the, uh, the schools technically are not township. Right. Right. Except that when we did the survey, we got them to sign up, 
so that we got them surveyed at least and so on and so forth. And um, but the golf course is you know to play a park and all the parks are and so on yep. and so forth. Okay, so okay, so now we have the um, Colonial Terrace project where we were hoping to get some trees along what amounts to uh, Route 35, that area, so that that park there could be more protected. Okay, we've gone over here several times. And there's also a bunch of some of the cones on cherry trees there are in uh, are in bad shape. Okay, so Bill, and there's also a bunch of things that are in the way, so to speak, there's some black locusts there that are in pretty bad shape. And Bill did uh, put out a proposal, uh, which I'm going to steer with Dave and ask him to turn public works on. Okay. He was like, that's only that's the reason with the new uh, capital expenditures we've got that those black locusts could be taken down you know, internally, so we'll call it. Right? Mm -hmm. And then he wants to put this stuff called uh, Garlon 4 on the stumps, which it's not so much to rot the stump out. I know that uh, when you cut down a black locust, okay, it starts to sucker up all over the place. Okay. Right. And I saw that actually at the synagogue that I go to, they took down a tree, and, and they were, you know. So, um, well, I did find it. Roundup seems to look pretty good on them, so we'll see how that happens. I don't know how many more are going to keep coming up, okay? But, uh, well, uh, well, if I recall, Bill talked about this at the last meeting. Has right. anything more been done? Right, he, talk, he, he talked about it, okay? I'm not sure what's been done. Um, there's, of course, there's two aspects to this project, okay? So, this aspect of it, I'm going to get him, I'm going to send Dave a thing saying, okay, this is what the project is. Let's get public works energized and so on and so forth, okay? Mm -hmm. So the idea, this includes, as part of this also, taking out the, uh, the quantons that are bad, okay? And those obviously would need the ground on and those stumps. I mean, could, could possibly, the best thing to do if you can, if you want to replace a tree in, in the same location, the best thing to really do is get some equipment there and take out this, dig out this stump, okay? Mm -hmm. Because then you can plant there. I had, my house several years ago, I had in, uh, a Dawn Redwood, which was maybe 60, 70 feet tall. I was starting to mess up my driveway, and it turns out uh, Gene Armstrong came and you know, took, it out, took it out, right? But to get the, the root, I had my power line going under and everything else. So I actually had some guys hand dig this giganto stump that uh, Gene came and got independently, you know. And, that, and basically, that was as costly as taking the rest of the tree down, you know, just to get that out, where it was this gigantic stuff. But I knew if I didn't do that, when we ground it, I'm going to have this place right next to the driveway and find a piece of real estate totally useless. Right. So doing that sort of stuff is good. Also, for what it's worth, the um, spotted lanternfly's favorite plant. Okay. The uh, yeah. senior moment as usual. Okay. Oh, yeah. Anyway, that one's also another one that if you cut it down, it comes up better. You know, and you got to do the same thing with those. And we've got a bunch of those. Yeah. So you're, you have a digital version, you have a digital version of Bill's plan. So you have no, well, I have, I have this. Okay. In a PDF. Okay. Basically. So you can send the PDF, Dave, and, and, and yeah, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. See what they do. Right, I'm going to do, so I'm going to do that. Okay. okay. And the second thing I'm going to do to him, I'm just can't get caught up, because I'm still working on the, the grant, believe it or not, because we, have, we haven't gotten our money back yet, because we have to file a bunch of stuff. Okay, so I'm working on it. I'm hopefully pretty close, I think, to get to that point. And um, so the other one I want to send him relates to the uh, Shade Tree Commission report that we talked about. Did you wrote up? And so on and so forth. So those two things are things that I want to get uh, in Dave's hands. And I had a nice note two days ago that said I was going to do it yesterday, and I saw it again today, and it was now I'm going to get to memory. But soon I'll get those. And this one, you know, so this will be going into now. As far as the other one is, there, some of those are list I couldn't find before we came over. This was a little bit late. I was looking for. There were some nominal lists 
or plants discussed to be planted in addition to the corn on cherries at Colonial Terrace, like New Way maples and you know, evergreens and stuff that we're going to go closer to uh, screening out uh, the traffic, you know, going by on the circle and the territory drive or even Hesbury Avenue, I suppose, it's what to say what that piece of roadway classifies as. But, uh, yeah, well, yeah, except that Busbury Avenue continues on all the way down Route 66 and keeps going, so I'm not sure what We know. <laughs> I'm just saying. So whatever it is, whatever it is, that's the place we got to go. So I'm not sure who's got that list or anything, but I think that also is something that they should start, you know, going uh, forward with getting bids and so on. So I saw this thing from last week, right? Whoever joined us at last month's meeting, they were talking about asking for a list of tree nurseries to ask for pricing and so on and so forth, but I think that, that shouldn't be on the Colonial Terrace Association no, no. to do any of that stuff in my opinion. Anyway, you know, so, but that means we do have to get, you know, all ground zero on it and start moving. So that's where that stuff stands. Okay. So, um, okay. Anything, anything else? Anyone have any other thoughts on Colonial Terrace or any other specific things that We've either discussed in the past, or you want to bring up now? No. Okay. Okay. So the next thing on the agenda is tree keeper. Okay. So we we got tree keeper, we got training, and so on. So we're saying that people have accounts. I got to admit myself, I have I have not gone back into there. I even got some correspondence from them talking about some other tree keeper stuff that they changed or added or stuff that I that I didn't do anything about. Okay. And I also told uh, Kelly Terry, I don't know when that was, that I would send out a thing to all the council people, which was also on my list of things that I didn't get to this week, where I would give them access to TreeKeeper with the kind of uh, password account access that you will have, okay? And uh, go forward from that. That's part A of TreeKeeper, okay? I did find the, uh, the email that has the training video, which goes about three hours and 40 minutes. You know, and um, it's kind of drag along, if I remember correctly, to three hours and 40 minutes. It did not feel like three hours and 40 minutes. <laughs> you know, but, uh, Hard to know which way you mean by that. Well, it, okay. didn't like, well, it didn't seem like 10 minutes, I can tell you that. No. Okay. No. So, so anyway, <laughs> it wasn't the excitement that really built up. Uh, mm -hmm. you know. But anyway, so uh, so we've got that sort of stuff, okay? Then uh, Tree Keeper itself, um, we haven't done this yet, and we should. Now, this, this, the very lowest level of tree keeper access is just to go onto the website and look at what the trees are by name. That's all the real information you get on the trees to start with is the name, the type of tree it is, and where they are. However, there is also a lot of other stuff on there that you can look at about, you know, that relate to trees and so on and so forth. That's still public access type stuff. So we want to get that. Uh, at least get start getting that put once I get my get more into what I've got what we actually got. We want to get that on the town's website and people can go there and look at what trees are where. Okay. Hi. Now I know we've been taking down some trees, a few of which must have been on the hazardous tree list that was in Tree Keeper. I'm assuming have this build, but I'm assuming that some, at least one of them had to be, which means we should have been take, modifying the inventory that's in Tree Keeper. You know, to take that tree down. I don't think Bill has been on Tree Keeper. When we asked him last month about this, he basically said, no, I've been driving around doing my own no, inventory. So no, no, so no, no I'm, saying, I'm not saying he specifically. I mean, the tr he can identify the trees that were on the survey. I think he did see that did see that in the beginning. And go for, you know, and then someone, because one of us should be able to go in and move. The, the problem with multiple inventories is they get out of sync awfully quickly. Yeah. And it, I think it should be part of Bill's responsibility to go in and modify Tree Keeper. Yeah. Um, and make sure that you, there's just one database or two, it's, it should be his responsibility to keep them in sync. Yeah, I, I, that would be my, I mean, I'm all for full transparency and the public being able to see all the different layers of Tree Keeper and public information. And all of us would see it, but I, for instance, would not want access to change anything because we could mm -hmm. accidentally mess it up. You just want well, one person right. or I one think, group of people doing I it. I think that, yeah. that, that there's only three layers. I think right now, if I recall, there's only three levels. 
One level is just look at the trees. The next level is where you can actually change the data. And the third level is where you can give people, say, the second level of access and stuff like that. I don't think there's one that enables people to look at the data, but I can find that out. Now, if they said there were some changes, two keeper changes, I can find out what the business is. Okay. So I'm just going to make a little bit, just well, talk so to them. I'll call up the guys that need to be made secure. Yeah, and, and mm -hmm. we need to have somebody who's staff, you know, the public work search for person, whoever's in charge of maintaining coordinating it with public work. Right, well, the people I'm going to get back to the next level, you know, thing to it, when I said the council, that's going to be Steve, you know, and anyone else you can suggest, you know, to the top of your head. Um, you know, and he may want to give it to a few of his people too, or talk to him, you know, and maybe even uh, to whatever level to uh, the township, let's say the planner and the uh, town engineer and people like that, possibly would have use for that. Yeah, I think it should be a very, 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 very small group that actually is responsible for going in and changing data, updating data. I think that should be like one or two people and probably at public works or wherever the tree people right. are. Right, that's where I think we may have, a, I'm not sure if there's a disconnect between the, the levels and who has access. But it could be, it, like it could be, it could be only the third level, which right now I have, you know, and I'm not sure who else actually has one. Well, which level right now doesn't matter. We have to, someone, some individual has to be Correct. appointed and responsible. Tell them, and then we'll worry about which level. Well, I'm saying, right. well, I have to, to find out. I'm going to talk to them. I'm going to talk to them about, mm -hmm. you know, I'll give them a call probably next week. The Higgins, talk to no, the, the um, Davy people. About three keeper oh, okay. and, and but you said you're going to need to access and make talk to Steve. Yeah, well, I'm find out who else he might want to have that can go look at things aside from him. Steve Higgins would be the person to talk to. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. And it seems like you need there's no mechanism in place. I and mean, this is very similar to the maintenance management software packages I run at some of the plants mm -hmm. and. So in theory, that package could issue the work order to take down this specific tree, and it has to go out and come back. And because if you don't have a circle, obviously there's no circle here. There's no way to close it. And there's no person who feels right. really responsible for it either. I right? think. So it was the planner. I was issued, had to issue yeah. when I had to collect yeah. them, and I also could go in and change the data, but that's. Okay, so then we have the uh, yeah, let's do that. I don't know if, I'm not sure if I gave Dave uh, access in. And you have a lot on your list. I mean, we're here. You can delegate too. I mean, if right. it's as well, then, you know, we can help. Yeah. Okay. So, do it all. Okay. Okay. So okay. So anything? Anyone else have any questions on TrueKeeper at all? I do have a question, and I wanted to raise. I don't know if you have a separate bullet point, but the report that Davies produced about having um, access to that—it is—it is, it is uh, you know, it's a public, you know, public, publicly viewable report. Um, so I think it should be access to that on the website, so people can see what the. They, they wrote that plan, and I think that would be a good thing for people to right. be able to, to yeah, see. It turns out, when I was talking to the D, I, I kind of made one group. They, they called it a community forestry management report or something like that. Right. Or, co or community forestry plan, not management plan. Okay? But I, of course, from my wisdom, went in and changed that. So it's got, you know, because it's had a lot of the stuff that should be in with the, the new plans that they're talking about. So right. Talking, right. So, but that wasn't quite correct in that. It does, it does also other things it doesn't have that we want in our plan, such as the original community forestry management plans that we got produced. You know, talk more about the town and the shape of the town and the makeup of the town, blah, 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 town, town, towny stuff, right? So that stuff, uh, we need to come up with something. Uh, that, so 
the polynatural colon A can be referred to management plan anymore. We have to re edit it or something like that. You could just call it the Davies report. You could just call it the inventory report. No, no, report. the plan itself on the front page now says yeah. refer to management plan. Okay, so I've got to, we have to adjust Right, that. but you can change that and it, it's just. Just, you know, just saying. Just simple. saying. I mean, nomenclature. It's, yeah, just, just yeah, change the. Right. the right. Word. right, just saying. So, we, so that, that I think we can get it. Right? And then can we get it on the website so people can see the results of the inventory? Typically, can see what David had to say. We were going to discuss this tonight. Right. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of data. There's a lot of like, percentage data of things. I mean, this and the next thing, all that sort of stuff. There's, there's nominal budget data in there. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure whether the township itself and the council, you know, has allocated any of that stuff for, for uh, other than take it because historically when they needed something, they took it out of the shade tree. As opposed to having an actual five-year plan on how much we expect to spend on various things and so on and so forth, which is laid out to some extent in that report. Yeah. So, so long as what they've written is accurate. And this is, and this, my understanding of the report they wrote was that this was what they assumed this would cost to do this, to do that. Well, most of those costs they picked were like some of their costs, and then, um, you know, Bill wasn't sure what, you know, maybe there was a pie or, or not, and whatever, it's not clear, you know, and I'd ask Gene to take a look at it, which I don't think, you know, came up with any numbers to me to say what it would you know, be here. Like they maybe say it takes this kind of tree would cost. Six thousand dollars to take out, and the answers were two or three. I don't know. But m my point is that it doesn't matter. I mean, this was the result of what a grant, you know, a municipal grant created, and this is the product of this no, grant. I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing that. I'm just so I just out think it should be utility, out. I'm just pointing out the utility of some of those numbers. Right, right. right. but I think that's I think the public should have access to it, and that's when you have a conversation with somebody and say, you know what, this is this doesn't look right. We argue with this. Or we, you know, you have a conversation. Uh, it's just, it is what it is. Maybe we'll come to a meeting. Yeah, maybe we'll come to a meeting. Maybe we'll have something to Since we have something to meeting, let's not forget that we have a public to hear from. That's <laughs> uh, <laughs> true. I, I, my only comment about... Yes, you have any Can I ask you? Sure. My name is Carol Doyle, and I'm from the um, Ocean Council Park Club. I live in Lormasa, mm -hmm. and I was working on a project with a group of people who have been restoring the library gardens. I made a comment earlier. Is there a list of the trees that are available to the Colonial Terrace folks? Are you, or is there it's not like we have, It's not like we have a list of trees that are available. It's not just that. Uh, it was a proposed list of trees that might be used you know, for what they want to do. Okay? And then once we, the master plan, so to speak, that, um, I, but what Dave Brown told me is like we have a project, we identified a project, but we want to do the theoretical work. You can look at this. It's my copy. Okay, I'll just take a quick. Okay. Because you mentioned Norway maple, maybe that was just coming out, but that's not a native uh, plant to the United States, East Coast, or New Jersey. No. And I know you guys have. No, I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. Well, Asia actually. <laughs> <laughs> but they are reasonably fairly close to the right? Because there's only a few plants that we would probably just use the used in red cedars or something like that would be all over the Yeah, I was going to say there's good replacements. Yeah. Thank you for letting me get that. Do you mind if I take a picture just so we have it? I don't know. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Thank you. That was my only comment. Okay. No, no, no problem. So, no, my, so is it my understanding that once you change the title on the, get the title you know, the way you're comfortable with it on the Davis report, that that then can be a link to that and then be put on the sheet yeah. page? I just want to go, I want to look at it again. But I suspect that if, not, if there isn't something we, we won't want, but I don't see the reason why we can't. But then again, there's always, you know, I can't say, yeah, if there's nothing in there that I would, I would hold back. But I can't say there's something wrong. Well, I don't think we can hold anything back on that. It's a public, it's a public document. I think under the Open Records Act, it's a public document. I think changing the name on the front of it, if that, if that was something you did, that said you not yeah, comfortable yeah, enough. Yeah, a few places I changed it. But, but, that, but what Davies presented to us, to me, that's a public document. And, uh, sure. that's, and that, under the Public Records Act, that should be on it. Whether you stand behind it or agree with everything on it, 
that's not the point. I mean, that's right. you I mean, hear what you're saying. But I would, I would move that we put this. I mean, I, I want, you know, to be on the record today, and I think this should be on the website. Um, right. I'm not saying it isn't, but okay. maybe I could one of your tasks and say, tidy it up. All right. So you tidy it up, and I'll, I'll get it to whoever who handles the website. Someone who does the website stuff. What do you? What do to you put mean? something on the shade tray, to put a link, to create a link, to put the um, Davis Resource Group report on the website. You can send that to me. Oh, that's, I can write that down. I can remember that. <laughs> All right. Okay. So once you clean it up, then we can get it to, get it to Don. Do you need this? This is the trees. Did you want to attach this to what you get? These are the trees that Bill Brooks had. Oh, last week for this. That's what you okay, yeah. You can add that to your. Must have eaten. Here, wait. Let me take a picture before I give it to you. Why don't we just make some copies before we run out of it? That would be easier. Okay. That works. Maybe. Let's I can do that while. Okay. We're in the other meeting or something. Okay. Cool. Okay. So let me see. Let me make a note here that I was making something. Okay, so um, so community uh, outreach is the race thing in August. Yeah, pretty much covered that in the whole which, school which thing. We've already, we already talked about it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All good. So, girls, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're actually doing over there with the sets in these days? Um, so, we're learning about like all the pollution. And currently, we're raising oysters for the Reclaim the Bay program. So we're raising them in our classroom until January, I believe, and then we're releasing them. Shouldn't they be clams if it's a reclaimed the Bay? So they have like different types of like clams and oysters. And yeah. they Just the right ideas. No, but that's good. That sounds good. Oysters are much better filters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Than Mm -hmm. And have you been also starting as your class also studying um, heat zones, urban heat islands? Like we are doing urban heat islands. That's something we're looking more into for the project we're doing, which we decided to do. But like we did a little like we took one day to learn about it, and then we kind of moved on from it. There are actually two islands in the Shrewsbury River that are part of Ocean Township. Oh, just one. The other one disappeared? One natural, no, one natural island. There was a, a sledge island, it's all dredged, it's close. But they were studying the heat islands of what happens when you go into urban heat. No, 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 I'm just talking in general. Oh, okay. You want to go to the island? Yeah, it's right. different. <laughs> okay. Right, keep up. <laughs> right, very good. Okay, so anything else? Uh, I don't know. Oh, Moshe, you have anything to add about anything? Yeah. And actually, we have some other people attending the meeting. I'm curious if they have any comments. And Jack looks like he's here. Hi, Jack. Jack's here. Welcome. Well, who else do we have up? So, who is in? So, watch. Moshe says. So, anyway, see. So, I see online. Um, when I go to meeting, there are several people who have joined us. If you, yeah, hi. Okay. If you want to identify yourself in this, if you have any comments, we'll be glad to hear them. Um, my name's Molly Walker, and I um, live in Rolling Meadows, and um, I'm on the board. Uh, and I'm, we're having trouble with our trees, so I thought I'd come and listen and um, see what I could learn. Welcome, Molly. Okay. What 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 kind of troubles are you talking about? Well, they're just getting it. That's um, Community is about 20 years old. They're, the shade trees are 20 years. Um, there's never really been a, a tree maintenance program. It's mostly if they die, then take them out. And it's a little confusing of uh, taking taking a tree out and, and replacing every tree. Any tree that comes out dies or needs to be taken out to replace it and what to replace it with. So I'm trying to learn more. 
I was been doing the taking the tree ordinance uh, workshop, listening to that. I still have to do the third one, um, the shade tree um, or no, it's a tree ordinance workshops that were held this spring. So um, just concerned, we have a wetlands and it was really you know wet last uh, spring and. Uh, residents were concerned that you know the trees were going to die in the wetlands because it held the water for so long but that was just sort of the backup because we'd had an unusual amount of rain we have giant uh, sweet gum trees that have been there for years apparently right so well, the trees can take it quite wet like sweet gums can take it pretty wet and red maples can take it pretty wet the problem yeah. like, is that you kind of my guess is you'll lose more trees to the drought than you're going to lose to any of the rain that came yeah because it yeah. doesn't rain, it just doesn't rain anymore. I think we're going to be the new Arizona. Yeah. So this is Faith Teitelbaum. Hi, Faith. Um, hi, hi, Molly. Hi, uh, Faith. Hi. I just wanted to say that the uh, the land behind your development belongs to New Jersey Natural Lands Trust. And uh, there's you know, like be that goes up to the whale pump brook there's right i know that our the the um, wetlands that we had that was filled um couldn't drain because uh down deal lake was full and and we drained down to deal lake or whale pond no you, so, you drain down to takanasi lake in oh, long Takanassi lake. Lakes. okay yeah where we work at ross lake that's part mm -hmm. of the watershed Okay. And um, so um, the state purchased that land because it's the farthest north stand of white cedars in New Jersey. And when huh. they were putting in Route 18, the um, state made them preserve that. And you know those ponds, those five ponds that are on the other side of Route 18, that also belongs to New Jersey Land Trust. Okay. Yeah, well, we knew that there was some uh, depart DOT uh, land. There's a, the middle school behind one section, and then next to that is the DOT, and that goes up to Route 18. Okay. Something like that, so. Yeah, and you know, so just to give the watershed a plug, we're trying to make a green greenway that goes all the way from Long Branch. And so Ocean Township has a big part of it that's already belongs to New Jersey. And they said that we could go through it as long as we told them what the trails would look like. So one of these years, maybe we can get that done. Mm -hmm. Hey, maybe is there a chat on this Zoom? Can you put your information so Molly can? Because Faith is head of the whale pond um, watershed association. So Molly, maybe Faith, you can put your info in the chat, and Molly can. Yeah, Molly comes to Ross Lake and helps us clean up. So. Oh, so just okay. <laughs> I'm I'm also a master gardener from uh, just a year and a half ago. So. Right. Yeah. So uh, we love to have Molly come to the the pond. The Ross Lake. <laughs> so I'm get, trying to get my feet wet. Yeah, great. You know, we also had a forester do a study of that area. We got a grant from the USDA. And um, they did a study about what we should do, what the, what the topography was, and just everything you want to know about the land, because we wanted to put a trail in, but we never, we haven't done it yet. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, I'm also in charge of uh, our retention basins and irrigation, and I'm trying to get them to water a little less, so a lot less, so we don't have squishy lawns and fewer mosquitoes and mold. Oh. So those health issues. Um, I'm also I'm a retired nurse midwife, so um, oh. um so this is um, actually this is really what I wanted to study in college, but. Um, you know, being a nurse was a safe occupation. You could always get a job. <laughs> My mom paid for that. My mom and dad. <laughs> well, thank you for doing that. Yeah. So, um, 
like I said, I'm just trying to get my feet wet and just uh, learn, um, you know, what's going on. And well, it's really helpful for us to have uh, citizens such as yourself and experts come in and talk, you know, talk, uh, talk to us about what you need in your community and what's going on in your community. We really want to hear from people as much as possible. Marianne Ellis. Thank you. So, okay. So, Marianne, do you have anything to join? Yes. Hi. I'm a, also a recent Master Gardener graduate in Molly's class and yeah. I'm working with my sister, Carol Doyle, who's in the meeting there um, on the library garden. Um, I have a question, a uh, request. Uh, someone at one of the previous meetings that we've attended um, suggested that the tree in front of the library have a tree gator, and I'm wondering if the Shade Tree Commission has access to them that they would like to donate to the library building. Well, right now, we we don't we haven't purchased any yet. Uh huh. I think we, the Public Works will probably be purchasing them when we're trying to go around to planting things. Um, Can we get somehow get on the list to purchase one? But but. Mm -hmm. It may have one in my garage. What <laughs> <laughs> just bought there something? Somewhere I was doing something. And I don't know if it's got holes in it or what. Okay. I never use it. But um, no, I mean, I think the um, the library. Mm -hmm. Who was in charge of the library planning? Was it what? Who planned that? That that township plan? Yes. Yeah, yes. So so, I I don't see why we can say, gee, you put in a tree, you need a gator that we can't, you know, we can't talk to public works about that and see how much that would cost. I appreciate that. Um, the other thing that I would like to bring up is um, any of those things that you're doing over there classified as a municipal for planting. Uh, you know, for the library that is in one of the parks. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll talk to the head of public works and see if they can get a what kind of tree is it? How big is it? What's the it's a Katsura tree? And it's about what do you think, Marianne? Wait, is this the Katsura tree you're talking about? Yes, it's a small tree. I saw you said that that it looks like it's in bad shape. Or well, it's actually budding right now, which may mean bad things for next year anyway. It's budding but right now. It's, bad. it's fully, fully budded right now. Well, it's the cherry trees. And is that cher a kind of cherry tree? No, it isn't. It's not. Okay. Well, how big? What's the diameter of the tree? Uh, Mary, what do you think? I, I think it's 15 feet tall. And I would say this the uh, diameter, maybe six, eight inches. Yeah, I'll. Can can I'll get your contact info from your sister. I'll get I'll get the okay, great. information and I'll just tell someone and I'll I'll t I'll connect with the mm -hmm. That's a minor. Yeah. That's a minor thing. Well, for for evergreens that have low branches, Bill was talking about something. It's not quite what they call a gator, but it's some other thing they refer to. Maybe it's on this thing here. We also have a water watering tree. Water 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 Maybe something like that Norm. might be something that's better for Norm. us there. Watch the time, please. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I'd like to ask, and this probably is DPW, is um, if you all have any information about what's known as the rain garden. It's a very grassy area in front of the library. We've, get, we've gotten mixed information. Uh, some people say that there's a cement pool under there. It seems like there's landscaping pipe running into it. Um, is there a plan somewhere for the building and the grounds that we could access to determine what's under there? Wasn't that an Eagle Scout project? Uh, no, no. I would, I would be a, I would ask Public Works about that too. They okay. might know. Start okay. I'd ask the museum. The museum. The, the small building that's out there between the museum and the library was a pool house. Right. right. There is a swimming pool there that was filled in. Oh, so you think so, that the cement stayed? I am yeah, pretty there. sure they, that the pool was not taken out. No, but, I, but if my memory serves me right, they drilled or core drilled holes through the cement. Okay. Okay. So it would drain. But, oh. Okay. At this point, it would be helpful to have the plan because I think there's a concern about is the water really going down there? Um, because from the, there's plastic, you know, tubes that have been there probably for 20 years. And it's unclear whether that's actually leaving the basement of the library and going down. And there, there is interest in turning it into an actual functioning rain garden. Right. Okay. Yes. Right. So, so the museum may have the plans. Okay. The original uh, Woolly House. Okay, great. 
Oh, is my last third? Can I have a third? <laughs> Just a um, I, I believe that Rain Garden was originally created we, by the Garden Club. Can we take this minute? Ken, we know that Ken had something else. Yeah, yeah I, I'm concerned that some of our wooded areas may be very vulnerable to fires. Since we've seen fires all around the state. Right. And I'm wondering if the town is taking any precautions about maybe cleaning out some of the underbrush to try and prevent that. And I'm wondering if that's uh, something that public works needs to look at. I know that they're working overtime to the roof right now. And they've got people seven days a week doing that for the busiest season. But um, while I've got Stephen on the phone for these other things, <laughs> I will ask him about the fires and what they're, because I'm sure they're concerned as well. I would yeah, imagine. Yeah, right. You know, yeah, I, there was a fire last night I came home and I smelled smoke. Yeah. Okay. And someone said it was down. It's Jackson. Neptune. Jack, yeah, yeah, Jackson like, somewhere. We, said, uh, we, we have one minute left. We have to have her ask her third. She had a third question. Oh, sorry. Yes. Who? Who had another question? Mary, 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 one more question. Okay. Uh, just Pickle shared with me the list of trees that was offered to Colonial Terrace. And I'm wondering, um, in this day and age, why we're not limiting to native plant planting. Native plant Good question, and we'll certainly express that priority. That 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 is a well. Uh, uh, you know, there's a there's a movement afoot. Yes. In New Jersey now, that that is, there native plants are important, but there are many plants that were never natives originally that have now become New Jersey natives. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. the biggest one is a Norway blowy maple, okay, which is the most invasive plant in the country. But but they are talking. The state's talking about figuring out which ones are reasonable plants, good plants, you know, and uh, and it may not be such, they're not going to consider them necessarily as invasive species if they're not natives. Now, I'm not fully into what's going on there, but I've heard people talking about that. Yeah, I do know that they're planting southern trees further north now in the yeah. cities. That doesn't necessarily mean non-native. Because of climate change. Yeah, those are, those are native, not to this area. They're moving north because you know climate change. Yeah. Okay. So I think, I think it's within the the purview of the um, shade tree commission to limit to whatever trees are made available in the town. No. And why not make it just the, uh, New Jersey natives or U.S. natives? Why are we planting um, imported trees, landscape trees? That's a really good point, and I think that you're right that this is something that we should, you know, prioritize and, and discuss. Uh, we have not uh, done a lot of planting in the last three years. We've been spending most of the shade tree fund, frankly, on ha removing hazardous trees because we have so many trees that have to be removed the life and limb early. So now that we're working more on planning, that that's that's a really valid point, and uh, I think it will, you know. Great, thank you. Yeah, Sunshine. All right, so we're we're over time as always, which uh, not, not as, as not always. Quite always, always. And you're lucky, it gives you less to mess up. Move for adjournment. All right. Okay. So I'm going to adjourn. Patty and and uh, Steve okay. simultaneously move. To <laughs> yeah, so and any, everybody, everybody, let's just adjourn, just adjourn and I'm not arguing about the big one. You got it. So much better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.